recognizing this is a spiritual thing we're doing, not just an economic thing we're doing. Really, it's a right. spiritual thing first, right? Right. So, this is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things Black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. When I say Black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Wall Street. Black Wall Street. When I say Black, y'all say Wall Street. Black. Black. Blair Durham serves as co-president of Black Brand, the Hampton Roads Regional Black Chamber of Commerce, where she leads the charge in identifying and implementing solutions for closing the wealth gap, raising the next generation of entrepreneurs, and empowering the community to embrace the concept of common unity. Her social justice passion was birthed during her undergraduate career at Virginia Tech, where she studied social justice while helping to build a platform for the same. Blair is a wife and homeschooling mother of two who enjoys gardening and other outdoor activities in her spare time. Family, let's welcome Blair Durham to the Minding My Black Business podcast. Welcome to Minding My Black Business. All right, family. We, sir, I know I say this every time that we have a treat, but I, I'm always telling the truth. And so this time we certainly have um, such a special guest joining us today. And I'm so excited that um, she's here. And once I get into my questions, you'll completely understand why. Um, but she has just been doing some big things, particularly where I am in the 757. Um, and so we're going to talk about that for a little bit. But I have already started the interview, so let me pause and get my manners together. And welcome, Blair Durham, to the Minding My Black Business podcast. So welcome, Blair. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Dr. Taylor. I'm excited to be here. Oh, well, thank you for joining me. Um, so before we get into all of my questions, can you introduce yourself to the family and then let them know where they can find you? Sure. Well, my name is Blair Durham. Um, I am currently co-president and one of the co-founders of Black Brand. We are Hampton Roads Regional Black Chamber of Commerce, and we can be found on Facebook at Black Brand Biz, uh, online, uh, or online on our website, www.blackbrandbiz. Is that enough info? No, that's, that's it. That's it. Perfect. Okay. I mean, we're we going to get into something. Uh, so <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's perfect. And so what I'll do is I'll include those links when I do the show description so that people can follow those accounts and check out all the wonderful things that you all are offering from classes to networking events to conferences to uh, pitch content. I mean, OK, so clearly <laughs> I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. So, Blair, what brought you to entrepreneurship? How did this happen for you? Mm. You know, it's funny because um, prior to Black Brand, I had been trying to enter the entrepreneurial realm via multi-level marketing, via... Um, you know, it's funny, I actually started a business called Found for Words, where my mission was to empower small businesses this about 10 years ago. Wow. I had no idea it was taking me to this place, but I knew I had a passion for helping small business owners. I was always running into these, you know, one man bands <laughs> yes. that were lacking in some significant ways. And I just felt like if I could add like a couple of key pieces to what they were doing, that it would support them and kind of help take them to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, and then to not really being supported myself. So like, uh, how do I really be an entrepreneur? You know, I'm going to have to like do it on the side. And that didn't always feel nice. Um, so I'll say that, you know, since undergrad, I have worked um, in education and counseling and in um, sales management, just always extremely passionate about people in general. Um, and so when I met my husband back in 2014, 
wow, we had this immediate kismet. This energy was like, oh my goodness, we're supposed to do something together for the people. Like we knew that the day we met almost. I mean, it was crazy. And then we were in this, um, we were in a, what do you call those things? When you first started a job, what's the word? Like an orientation? Like an orientation. Okay, That's what it okay. was. Okay. In orientation, and um, I'll just never forget, first of all, all the different things that had us there at that time. But then the things that went on that week, like these different activities we were participating in, and I was like, okay, all right, I get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so, um, and so, yeah, we were pretty much engaged within a few months of that mm-hmm. and um, just resolute that we needed to do something for him to Rhodes. He was really, really frustrated with all that was going on. And I was just this little fireball, like, oh, you know, there's so much we can do. And I was thinking about my experience at Virginia Tech and how much we were able to do there um, on a voluntary basis, you know what I mean, to help kind of uh, manage some of the social ills. And I felt like, you know, we can we can start something. And so first we just started kind of a, a think tank to discuss the issues and find out what people were already doing. Yeah. Um, and that launched in January of 2016. Okay. And we were meeting monthly and um, that was pretty cool. But then once we realized, you know what, it's this economics piece. We need to hit this hard. Um, when we assembled a group, about this time in, in 2016 um, we were asking questions like well first we had a couple of presentations and then we were asking questions like you know what happened to the last black chamber um, I put forth a strategic plan people were like we need to run with it ASAP mm-hmm. and black brand was born um, wow. yeah and so so I'm an entrepreneur in the sense that I'm working full time for myself right um, <laughs> however we're the community's organization you know what I mean right yeah. right yeah so we're not yet funded for me to be able to like draw an income right um, man I'm probably working 80, 80 hours a week I, on Friday. gotta be <laughs> gotta be because I literally see you everywhere and I'm like how'd she get there and she did too and uh, it's <laughs> I don't even know like it is it's it's the Lord's thing. Right. Like, just keep going to the yeah. land that I'm going to show you, you know? Yeah. You <laughs> so. are definitely sowing some seeds, and I love it. And that actually leads very nicely into my next question in terms of, like, black brand. and um, Because I remember, so I'm not originally from Virginia. I got here in 2012. Yeah. And so around about 2015 is when I started to think about entrepreneurship and actually you know, doing the like formal processes of getting the LLC, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And so I remember having questions at that point about other um, like businesses. And I remember people talking to me, well, a couple of folks talked to me about the Black Chamber of Commerce and wow. that it was sort of like defunct at that point. And so um, after some time, and I sort of looked back again, and that's when I, that's when I started to notice Black brand that popping up. So I am curious, like, why take that on? Why revitalize? Why rebuild the Black Chamber of Commerce? Ooh, wow. So I would tell you that the why that I thought that we had is mm-hmm. totally different than the why that I now understand. Okay, oh, so this I'm ready for this. Was, yeah. Yes, this thing is deep, man. So initially it was, you know, just looking at the various statistics associated with Hampton Roads. First of all, you know, you're talking about a lot of black people in Hampton Roads. Of course, for example, you know, 55% black people. Um, Norfolk, right around 35%. Over 500,000 um, African Americans in Hampton Roads. Wow. That's some pretty big numbers, That's you know. Significant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then when you look at the spending power, you're talking about close to ten billion dollars. You know what I mean? That black people are spending in Hampton Roads wow. every year, right? And so with those kind of numbers, you would think there would be some translation in terms of an opportunity structure, at least, mm-hmm. even if not, you know, power 
but like right. you know opportunity structure right uh-huh. um, but instead you're talking about the fact that you know Virginia makes more referrals to the school to prison pipeline than any other state uh-huh. and then you're talking about it really being concentrated in Norfolk you know and then at that time we were number three for police brutality uh-huh. um, just like mm, you know and then we, my husband and I both working in counseling we're looking at human trafficking you know and understanding yeah. prostitution and understanding the drug culture here and like you know understanding the housing crisis um, and just feeling like okay so the, there's a there's a ginormous missing piece here you yeah. know yeah. Uh, and then summer of 2016 is when Hidden Colors and uh, I don't know if you saw some of those documentaries um uh-huh. Uh, what was the other one? Generation One, I think it was. There were several that just looked at the economics piece. Yeah. Um, and so, feeling like we could leverage our our skill, uh-huh. you know, and our and our network to be able to build something. Now, what I'm realizing is. Um, when I think about the term chamber, I think about the heart. Uh, and I think about the fact that in order for us to have a solid economic um, network or structure or basis, we need a re... We, we've got to... That, those valves are leaky. We are ruptured in ways that... Um, you know, there's a lot of fingers that we can point, you know, at, oh, they're doing this to us and, and look at how they're portraying us here and look at, you know what I mean? Look at this institutional fill in the blank. Right. Uh, but the reality is until we manage our internal workings, mm-hmm. there's not going to be anything mm-hmm. that's going to fix it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um I mean, I'm just looking at there's a there's an African proverb that says when there's no enemy within, uh-huh. the enemy without cannot harm you. Huh. Um, and we just we have a struggle internally, right? Um, I'll give you a, an example. So our focus for 2018 has been collaboration. One of the focus, uh-huh. one of the focus is how do we partner with. Um, you know, with organizations, with individuals that are already invested in this work right. to further our reach. You know what I mean? We want to demonstrate to the community solidarity with regard to what we're building. Right. And the fastest way for us to grow really is to partner, mm-hmm. uh, to lend our support to people that are, you know what I mean? To say, hey, we're here. We're right. here. We're doing the same thing. I'm on board with that. Yes. Well, we went to, um, we went to go collaborate and we received a very threatening email that essentially said that you know unless black brand does this then we're going to do this the black brand what? and he frowns and I was just like oh <laughs> I get it now you know what I mean there's a there's a thing yeah. you know what I mean um, another example when I look at how we engage with social media uh-huh. um those of us that are that are you know self proclaimed you know conscious people uh-huh. Uh-huh. just going in uh-huh. on one another like and I'm just wondering do we think that that's the best use of our energy right in the fragile state that we're in right or are we really really wounded and sick and don't realize it uh-huh. you know um and don't realize that that will that's the fastest way to nullify our efforts um yeah yeah, i think and this kind of highlights the conversation i was having so the conversation around sort of uh being in the world in a scarcity mindset of feeling like there's like constant competition and then i have to do things to either make myself either make my light shine brighter or knock someone else down because there's only a certain number of pieces to the pie and and that feels 
that's a dangerous space to be. Like, what happens when all the pie is gone? <laughs> that's a dangerous space to be. Um, so I, I can certainly identify uh, with what you're saying about what it means to have something that is not well within. Um, mm-hmm. That the way in which you look at the world, it feels like constant competition. Um, but yeah, so that's terrible. Um, that the response that you all got was to sort of constrict you (laughs) or to silence you but but it's helped me it's helped to inform this newfound perspective about why we have to exist as an organization right so Mm -hmm. I guess I'm always in a place where I am defining and redefining our value proposition right as people Mm -hmm. ask well why would I become a member Mm -hmm. well you know, joining your local black chamber is a demonstration of economic solidarity uh-huh. or social justice uh-huh. um, with the tangible benefits of frequent networking, business education, and political advocacy. Uh-huh. You know, and, and posited that way, you see some different light bulbs going off. You know, well, why do why should I demonstrate economic solidarity? Uh-huh. Well, when we do that, then we can take our our dollars, our voice, our agenda mm-hmm. to the next person to say, here's what we want to see happen. And this is this is the result of or this will be the result of doing that thing. You know what I mean? Right. And this will be the result of not doing that thing. Mm-hmm. And that could be, you know, at the at the at the government level or, or wherever it is that we need to see something happen on our behalf. Um, and that represents a mindset shift, mm-hmm. you know, right? As well, so it's it's a work. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds like an understatement, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's work. <thank> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, in all of these things that I have uh, seen tied to you. Um, one the thing that always sort of is very striking is your love for your community uh, and your love for us, frankly. I mean, it just is very, very clear. Um, and so Work. what <laughs> what has been like the most surprising thing to you in terms of like feedback from the community as you go out and do these things? You know what? So I got to shout out this work that we're doing at Booker T. Mm. Um, I like to put together events where there's like two or three layers of benefit, right? Mm-hmm. So that the the user is receiving a benefit, the providers receiving a benefit, the people mm-hmm. that are watching are receiving, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. Because then I believe there's this confluence of energy that can be transformative. Uh Because again, recognizing this is a spiritual thing we're doing, not just an economic thing we're doing. Really, it's a spiritual thing first, right? Right. So when we started the Entrepreneur Mentorship Program at at Booker T, Uh we launched it with a fair. And the fair was... Uh, it was like a well yeah it was like a half day event at Booker T we first had a an assembly for the senior the members of the senior class yeah and so the students were able to come in and they were able to receive training from the city of Norfolk about uh, how to turn their hobbies into a business Mm. Um, they were able to hear a performance called 10 Rules to what is it? Ten rules to the business startup game by Clarence Harris, who's a CPA, but he's also like a, an incredible rapper who's gonna be like uh, pioneering this thing called Success Rap, which I really believe is gonna be a game changer for our community. Wow. Um, and then they were able to hear from one of their alum, who was uh, uh, Don Carey. He's a NFL player slash. Um, real estate investor he is a best-selling author and so that kind of got them ready for the fair right and, um when they got to the fair they met with about 40 business owners 
um, black business owners right having all of this tremendous success and everything from law to you know food and beverage mm-hmm. to um, education mm-hmm. public relations mm-hmm. finance I mean uh, we even had and this is my one of my favorite entrepreneurs to point to Tally and Twine um, you know what you know what this is so interesting so um Randy, so I, I interviewed Maybe. Randy a few yeah. episodes back, and he yeah. referenced this event, the one that you're talking about right now. Wow. I'm going to tell you what he said. Uh, but it was very powerful to him. So um, that was the thing that I was going to say, right? <laughs> you knew the students were going to get something out of right. it. Right. You know what I mean? But what the the Booker T staff got out of it, mm-hmm. what the business owners got out of mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Folks were like moved. Yes. To like tears and the realization that wow, I'm more than a business owner. Right. I am I am a community leader. Absolutely. I am a part of the village that is going to transform mm-hmm. black people. Mm-hmm. You know, and I have a responsibility with that that I maybe didn't even consider until now. You right. know what I mean? Right. So crazy. That's crazy. It. That's that was it. that was a surprise. It was. I mean, it was a welcome surprise because I mean, it felt like a ten million dollar paycheck. That's really what it felt like. It felt yeah. like this huge return on this investment. You know what I mean? That's just right. compounding lots of interest toward toward what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I'm just thinking about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and particularly how he talked about his own process of at first he wasn't going to do it because I'm so busy. And um, but then somebody stopped him and made him thinking about it. And I think it might have even been you. He didn't mention a name. Uh, <laughs> but um and so he, he, you know, blocked the time off and went. And so much yeah. like what you're saying, just to sort of see um, yeah. young people's reaction. Can you imagine that? Because I know good and well, when I was in high school, ain't no black person showed up. No. Beautiful display of two and $300 watches that right. they patented and sell from Portsmouth. Right. You understand that? That's, that was, that's uh, what he was saying. He's like, I, I had never seen that before. <laughs> never heard of it. And I said, you he have just... mouths were open. Right, right. I mean, not just at him in general. You know what I mean? Right. Like, professionals there. I mean, they were just like, wow. Exactly. I had to be a business owner. Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, so. just the idea that, you know, at least part of the glass box is being removed. Mm-hmm. And you know your ideas of where we can be, so. yeah, yeah, has has been expanded. So, yeah, okay, okay. So this also leads nicely to my next question. I, I promise you, I haven't shown you the questions beforehand, but you are nope. tying these in quite nicely. It makes it so easy for me. But uh, a few weeks ago, maybe even two weeks ago, your maybe a week ago, your fundraiser um, yeah. just ended. Um, your mm-hmm. boss, your boss fundraiser ended. And can you tell us about that? Because I think that's connected to what you were saying about the yeah. Um, so show. and then what happens next now that this is wrapped up? Yes. So we put together a fundraiser for the so you think your boss competition at Booker T. Mm-hmm. Um, and and really the primary goal for the fundraiser was to raise awareness Mm -hmm. that this is something that's happening in the community and to enlist community support. Um, even if it's just by, you know, liking pictures and video Mm -hmm. to this initiative Mm -hmm. so that we can then take it to Dr. Boone, who is superintendent for the city of Norfolk public schools to say, Hey, look, there's major support for what we're doing. People want to see this happen. Um, And so the cool thing about it was we, we raised via that mechanism. We raised exactly enough for what we had told the students we were going to give them 
in terms of what they would win, right? Wow. So seventeen hundred and fifty dollars. I think we raised like seventeen twenty one. It was crazy. I was like, wow. So we were able to award the one thousand dollars to the grand prize, plus the five hundred dollars to the second prize, plus two fifty to the uh, student who demonstrated the best sales skills, who sold the most tickets to the event. Gotcha. Um, and so what we're doing beyond that is we're reaching out to um, folks for for corporate partnership. Uh-huh. Because when we put this event on in the fall, I've actually already submitted the dates to the school for the next entrepreneur fair and then the dates for the mentorship series and then, the you know, the final date for the So You Think You're a Boss. Um, it's to be able to say, you know, for example, you know, J&K presents, you know what I mean? That's it, right, right, <laughs> right. Presents, you know? Yeah. Black Biz presents. Yeah. Um, this event. Mm-hmm. To, um, to demonstrate and you know, one of the things I said to the students as we were closing out because I read all the names of the people that supported them mm-hmm. and I said this is a this is a village effort these yeah. are your stakeholders these are the right. people that got your back mm-hmm. they want to see you do this and they're not just here in Norfolk or here in Hampton Roads these folks are all over the east coast so you got donations from as far as New York and California you know what I mean beautiful yeah um, People get this, yeah. and um, this is a this is a huge deal. And I think they felt that, like, wow, you know, I, I am doing something meaningful. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, um, so the fundraising continues. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, we, you know, like I said, the goal is to see this event be um, be fully funded semester after semester for these yeah. students, and then to expand it to you know other schools in Norfolk and then other schools in Hampton Roads mm-hmm. um, and not just high schools either you know mm-hmm. students can start businesses in elementary school, mm-hmm. elementary school. <laughs> right right um, and then another thing is we like to see Booker T become an entrepreneur academy for mm-hmm. the city of Norfolk um, right. much like Kensal High School in Virginia Beach yeah um, yeah because Booker T. Washington was obviously an advocate for small black businesses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, found in the National Business League and you know, all of the work that was done there. It just makes sense that um, folks from Norfolk, the city over, should be coming to Booker T. Mm-hmm. to learn how to start and run businesses. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the big picture for the program. Okay. Oddly enough, today is Dr. Uh, Margie Stallings' birthday, who is the very innovative principal at Booker T, who allowed this to happen. And uh, I'm just so grateful that when I happened to meet her very randomly, my mom was just like, hey, you know, don't you guys want to come to uh, one of our uh, alumni events? And we were like, oh, sure, there would be food. Great, we'll go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That thing was packed. They had about like 80 <laughs> alumni. And Dr. Stallings was there. And Wow. You know, I had a conversation with her. We met the following week and um, the entrepreneur fair idea was born. And she wow. was it, you know, and so that is nothing yeah. like when two great minds meet and the energy is there. Yes. Um, and the follow through, because that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so there was many, many, you know, and I was just grateful that she yeah. was open to adding another thing to her plate. Absolutely. So, as the CEO of that building, mm-hmm. she's managing a lot. But mm-hmm. she's like, no, we have to have everything that our students are going to need. And I truly believe this is the thing that our students are going to need. Absolutely. So, um, so yeah, just just grateful to her. Shout out to Dr. Stallings. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy <laughs> birthday to her. Happy birthday to her. Yes. So how do you... Um, how do you, Blair, how do you manage it all? So, entrepreneur, right? Entrepreneurial burnout, that's a thing. That's for real thing. Um, and when you are a pillar um, of the community, it can sometimes feel like there isn't space to take a pause or take a break or, um, or a timeout. Um, because people are sort of looking to you like, what's the next thing, you know? But how do you, how do you do it? How do you manage it? Well, I can't say that I'm managing it well at present. I think that's a good question because 
I, I do struggle to manage it in a way that honors everything else uh-huh. because it is something that I'm passionate about. Right. It's like it doesn't feel like work all the time, so if I can just pop in and out of working, you know. Uh-huh. Really uh-huh. all I know exactly what you're talking um, about. <laughs> I have to be very intentional to say. I'm not using my phone today. Mm. You know what I mean? Or I'm blocking out this number of hours or this number of minutes or this number of seconds <laughs> to not do work. Yeah. Um, and, and part of it is that this, for me, is not just work. It really is a ministry of sorts. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, I, I believe anything that you're doing in the space of justice has a has a ministry component, and so I want to make sure that I'm honoring that with with what I have. Uh-huh. Now, I haven't I haven't got into the space of of burnout yet, but I have definitely got into the space of um, not appropriately delineating boundaries. Uh huh. Uh huh. Which could lead to the space of burnout. Burnout. Yeah, easily. Easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. That is hard. That is hard. Be- especially yeah, if like I'm burning to do it. And then, you know, right. I, I sometimes feel like there's a direct relationship between what we can do and what we're going to see on the news next mm-hmm. week, next month. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's almost like, uh, and so mobilizing a group to help with that is a whole different piece of it you know what I mean and then I'm uh, managing my emotion around some of the things that we talked about earlier uh-huh. you know the internal struggle the internal community struggle to be on the same page without um, hurting one another Absolutely. you know Absolutely. Uh, intentionally or unintentionally it's like you know uh-huh. um, so yeah there's there's something there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, you just said a lot. So, um, I'm just, I mean, I'm just sort of sitting with that. Um, and I feel like that's probably a whole nother conversation. I honestly feel like there's been some preparation uh-huh. in me for this. Uh-huh. You know, people say, oh, you know, you study psychology. Uh-huh. Oh, you studied counseling. Uh-huh. Oh, you work as a counselor. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Right. And this does not seem related but again as we were saying we're talking about we're talking about a mindset shift uh-huh. that has to happen right in our community and you know an understanding of what that is is all tied to the extent to which we can be effective uh-huh. as an organization you know right and so yeah yeah, I, I could definitely see how uh, counseling and psychology would help you in your work um, and understanding behaviors or getting more context. And um, yeah, because I think it could be easy to sort of get in a space where uh, you sort of lend yourself to being more frustrated as opposed to more curious. And you, like, the way that I've seen you sort of move throughout the community is one of not just curiosity, but connection. And so, um, I get that. I get that. Um, okay. You really spawned like 15 more questions, but I'm gonna stop just for the sake of time. Uh, so what I think that means is you're gonna have to come back. (laughs) Really? Oh man, I would love to come back. (laughs) Yeah. I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. 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 Um, Anyway, so before we conclude, um, and yeah, um, yeah, I'm still like marinating on stuff that you said. So before we conclude, yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> okay. I hope you, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm definitely passionate, you know. I, yeah, I know that. I know that. I know that. Uh, no, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying, completely enjoying everything that I'm learning um, in your perspective. Um, okay. So, we're going to do this before we go, because I always have to know. What does minding my black business mean to you? Wow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. A lot. (laughs) 
you know, with really embracing the perspective that um, black business ownership is a responsibility beyond um, providing economic footing for one's family. Right. It really is a leadership role in our community. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just don't think that that could be understated because we, like I said before, you know, we we really are in a fragile, we're in a fragile space. Mm -hmm. We are doing more than we've ever done or or we're getting back to what we were, depending on how you want to look at it, you know. More black women are obtaining PhDs than probably any other Mm -hmm. sector of the population and we're, we're opening tons of businesses and but our heart is not there. Uh-huh. I don't know that we are uh, that we've kept up mentally uh-huh. or emotionally uh-huh. with our forward progress uh-huh. uh, on the on the economic front. Uh-huh. Um, so minding my black business means we've got to be careful to do that inner work as we are embracing all of our skill sets, Mm -hmm. as we're leveraging our talent, Mm -hmm. we have to be even the more conscious about who we are, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, the being part Mm -hmm. that needs to be where the doing uh, comes from. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so healing that so that it can be where the doing comes from, if that makes sense, Uh you know, because I'm concerned that if we continue to do out of the space of scarcity, Uh drama, Uh we aren't going to reach that goal. Uh And there could be, we could do more damage, we could do more harm than good. Right. Yeah. Individually and collectively. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, I think each of those things just pushes other people away. The Absolutely. scarcity and the drama that, mm-hmm. that breaks all those ties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I also believe that there's more that we all need to be doing as well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I get on the soapbox, you know, about our... Not only are we great entertainers, but I also think we have a palette for entertainment that might be too robust. <laughs> we want to be engaged all the time with something that is bringing us, you know, and, and maybe that comes from ah! having had a lot of trauma, uh-huh. you know, uh-huh. um, but I would that we would tap into ways we can build uh-huh. more. You know what I mean with our with our time and our energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what it means to me. All right. Well, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Blair, for your uh, your wisdom. Thank you for your uh, service, um, and thank you for your support of us. Thank you so much for this platform. I I believe it to be really innovative um, and necessary. Um, And I'm excited about the work that you're doing for Black entrepreneurs, with Black entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Good grief. You (laughs) have a beautiful niche. Well, thank you. I truly appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to you uh, joining our organization. We need you. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we need you. So if you want to know more and you like what you heard, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on the podcast. Also, follow the movement on our website, MindingMyBlackBusiness.com, and on our Facebook and Instagram pages, under Minding My Black Business, and on Twitter, under Minding My Black Biz. 
So peace and blessings to us all, family. And when you're out there and they ask you what you're doing, let them know that you're minding my black business. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Hey, yo, when I say black, you say Wall Street. What? Black Wall Street. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. When I say black, you say Wall Street. Black. Black. Uh. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Phenomenal.